Hi, my name's Lindy Cowling. Welcome to this channel. My website is www.lindycowling.co.uk. Email info at lindycowling.co.uk. Title of the short video on the beach today is Why Children of Narcissists Are the Last to Know. Why Children of Narcissists Are the Last to Know. As you know, this is an experiential channel, which means the work that I share is through personal and professional experience only. Why narcissists' parents affect their children in the ways that they do and why the children are the last to know is because Narcissistic parents, narcissistic parents are in the unique position of obviously bringing up their children from babies and they are in a unique position to enforce that programming, that influence, their own belief systems and behaviours by enforcing them, reinforcing them or modelling them from a very young age obviously from when you're a baby or a toddler. And why the children are the last to know is because it is not till much later on in adulthood, and sometimes they don't even realise it until adulthood or late adulthood, when they um, have got clear, if they get clear, of some of those belief systems and that programming themselves, that they are able to see the reality of things. So as I said, this is an experiential channel through personal experience and professional experience. And when I'm talking about the adult children of narcissists, um, many of them that I work with haven't realised this until they've come much later in life. When I say much later, in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, you know, even older, sometimes after the parents or parents have actually passed on. And the reason um, some people don't even realise it is because while they're entangled in that same programming and that same structuring and belief systems, um, they won't see it. It will affect their perception and their belief about the whole world, about their perception and belief of who they are. It affects everything profoundly. Uh, as they reach adulthood or as they get on later in life, um, some, a proportion of them will be able to recognise this, but a proportion of them won't. And it can be quite um, devastating when you recognise that someone who you felt parent-wise, or both parent-wise, and sometimes you can have both parents like this, um, was in your corner, so to speak, um, really was coming from that perception and wasn't in your corner at all. And it can be very devastating and shocking for people to realise that the one that they particularly relied on for their nurturing and their whole view of the world, a father, a mother or both, um, is, is really like, um, almost like um, the one that you're at war with. Now when I say the one that you're at war with, I don't mean that literally, but it's the way I'm trying to describe how people feel when they realise that their primary caregivers or nurturers um, perhaps don't always have their best interests at heart or they have their best interests at heart as long as it conforms to what um, the view of the world is from the, the narcissistic parent's point of view. So I'm, a, I'm not an expert on this, but I, uh, I only talk when I'm dealing with these things professionally or personally. I've seen over the years um, vast amounts of work by Sam Vackning, who is absolutely fantastic on, on YouTube. Richard Grannon, fantastic on YouTube. They talk about narcissism in all its forms. Um, Melanie Tonya Evans. I also really like Lisa Romano, love her work as well. And they go really professionally and personally into great detail on to overcome these things. Um, some of these people touch on it when it's parents. Um, and the majority of it is around if you have a romantic relationship with a narcissist or psychopath. There's not so much on whether it's your parents. Um, 
but there is some stuff out there and Sam Vaclin covers some of that as well. So they're, let's call them the so-called professionals, they deal with that day in, day out. I don't deal with it day in, day out, but I'm talking personally and professionally. I have seen it and I've also grown up in that. So um, my own mother being a narcissist and my own father being a psychopath. So for me, I knew about my father's tendencies for many years, but only came into full awareness of my mother's in the last two years. Uh, even though everybody else clearly could see it and were warning me ever since the age of 17, uh, I was the last to see it. So it can be, it can be shocking when you first realise that. It can be devastating for some people. It can be very hurtful because the person that you love, um, when they don't really uh, see you in the way that you thought they saw you and they see you as competition, and they see you as something or someone to be annihilated if you don't conform to them. Um, they single you out, out of their children as the black sheep of the family um, until you conform to the way they want. And of course, um, these are, I'm only touching on it. If you really want more in-depth detail, check out again Sam Vaknin, people like Richard Grannon, Melanie, Melanie Tonya Evans, um, Lisa Romano, who, who are doing all doing fantastic work on these kind of things. Um, what I will say is um, a narcissist, a proper narcissist, a full bone narcissist, not just one with the tendencies, will never ever see that they what they are doing is destructive or manipulative or, or quite plainly wrong or abusive. They are the last to see it. They are the last ones that will go to therapy if they ever go to therapy at all. And they just cannot see this. Another di dimension I'm going to add to this, because I've personally experienced it, not just within the Twin Flame Union, but personally with parents. One of my parents, by the way, is now not with us any longer. My father, he's a member of my guide team and he is fantastic. Um, I love him to bits. He is completely transformed since being over the other side. Uh, for quite a few years now. Uh, my mother is still alive um, at the moment, so uh, she is still here. But what I will say is um, what I have seen professionally and personally is these people with these characteristics, including parents, are very open to being manipulated. Um, just like I've talked about the manipulation of disruptor energies influencing people's behaviour, they are very open to being manipulated by entities, by attachments that feed through a person that has an automatic disconnect with their soul or an automatic disconnect in the, between the personality and the heart, an automatic disconnect in the head, in the mind. And I have again seen this professionally and personally many times and I have seen this um, with my own parents, both parents I've seen this in. So again I find this really interesting. Um, what I will also give a, a shout out to is there's a couple of, um, there's a lovely couple on YouTube that I really like their work. They're called The Authenticity Process. Now they brought out a video in the last few days which really resonates with me and um, they are great these guys they they are reworking and remodeling relationships um, in, in a way that I just thoroughly resonate with I really love these guys uh, and they talk in there about um, his mother who is no longer with us she has died um, also having certain traits and being influenced by um, entity and, and how they had to work to remove that and the influence it had on him totally resonate with me because that has totally been my experience. Does it mean um, I, I don't love my parents? I love my dad to bits. He's on my guide team. He's a primary guide of mine. I absolutely love him. Does it mean I don't love my mum? Um, I absolutely love the purity of who my mother is in her heart. Uh, sadly, she has not been able to access that purity in her heart for many years. Uh, I love the real her in there, but I don't get to see the real her in there very often. What I get to see is the entity and the, the poison and the attack that comes through there. Twice in my life, sadly in the last two years, I've 
I've had to work, walk away from my own well-being. The first time I walked away and the second time she walked away because I would not conform to what she wanted me to conform to. Um, wow, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ask the camera to pan round to the to over here a minute because <laughs> look what we've got <laughs> we've got this helicopter coming up. As I'm talking about um, as I'm talking about this war zone, literally, uh, which it can be when you're on that. When, when you're in this situation, um, what happens is the first time it happens when you trigger a narcissistic parent that keeps smashing you into the ground. It's devastating. Um, my heart's been broken many times over it over the years. Uh, then you get to a stage where it just leaves me feeling a bit sad now because I love my mum, the real mum. But, but I haven't got to see my real mum for a long time um, and I don't think I will in this life now. Um, I don't think I will. She'll learn it when she goes over the other side. So there's not really much left in me to trigger anymore. When you get pummeled into the ground so much for so many years, you get to a point where it kind of doesn't hurt anymore. You see the bigger picture. But at the same time, it's not right to stay on the end of abuse. I have seen controversial stuff out there which says you choose the parents you're born to um, and then you should put up with this stuff. Whilst I agree you choose the parents that you're born to, I do not agree that you put up with this stuff. You don't put up with abuse, whether it's a boyfriend, a lover, a girlfriend, somebody at work, um, or parents. Um, what you do is you try and transform within and you try and transform the situation. And there are some people that aren't going to transform or they don't want to hear it or they won't accept the real you. What you do is you, is you put yourself first. I mean, it's, it's not selfish, it's self-preservation and it's actually self-love. If you're continuously putting yourself in a situation where you're getting abused and mistreated year in, year out, that isn't actually self-love. That's very toxic and very destructive. It's actually very toxic and destructive for both of you, you know, the two people involved. So it's a very personal perspective on it, but I do deal with this in my work. It comes up now and again with parents. It comes up a lot with people's relationships. I've had that on all fronts uh, with the twin flame. I've also had it with both parents. I've come to a place now of resolution. I love them both in life and in death. Um, they will always be in my heart, but uh, it doesn't always mean they'll always be in my life. On that note, I will love you and leave you. As always, thank you for subscribing to this channel. Thank you for watching. Thank you for resonating. And uh, I'll love you and leave you. See you guys again soon. Bye-bye.